So the recording has started and it's lovely to see everybody. Um, and this is PyScript Fun for the 9th of May, 2024. Uh, so a week before PyCon US, which is next week, which is coming up soon. Um, and um, uh, PyScript Fun is, of course, where you turn up and you show us something fun about PyScript, something you've been hacking on, a cool project, whatever it is. It's the sort of thing, I always say this, you kind of gathered around the water cooler in the office and a colleague comes up and goes, hey, do you want to see something cool I've been hacking on? And you wander over to their desk and like half an hour later, you're still trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And it's just all about fun and sharing cool hacks and having uh, uh, and learning from each other. So we have three presentations today, presentations. Uh, th these are made up as we go along. So I have something to show, uh, which should take five minutes. Um, Fabio has something to show, which he assures me will take five minutes. And Andrea has something to show, which he also assures me will take only five minutes, which will be very, very good because then we can all get a bit of our afternoon back. So uh, we'll go in that order. And without further ado, I am going to try and share my screen. Share my screen, um, bum, 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 screens, uh, entire screen, better text readability, go live. Okay, can you all see my screen? At the moment, it should be you seeing yourselves. Yes, okay. So if I go to Firefox uh, and we go take a look at this, hopefully you're looking, um, I'll show you how it looks. Uh, this is PyScript.net, which is the homepage that we always give for the PyScript open source side of things. And what we're looking at uh, is an animation um, that doesn't actually do anything apart from animate uh, and then some links. And it's not changed since uh, 2022 when Peter first announced it. Now, because of Py PyCon next week, and because a whole bunch of things have landed in MicroPython and uh, so on and so forth, um, uh, really cool stuff, uh, we were thinking, wouldn't it be good to sort of, you know, um, improve this web page for PyCon? So um, what I've done is uh, I've, this isn't the source code for this page, for the page as it is live. This is just me using it in PyScript.com just so that people can check it out and have a look. So if we go look at the site in Firefox, this is what it looks like. Mm. And of course, this is me typing now because that was a little Python script in the background that was pr that was typing in for is print hello from PyScript, etc. So uh, hello to PyScript fun. And it is, of course, a live Python REPL. The important thing is that it started pretty instantaneously as soon as the uh, the browser rendered the page. Uh, I've been trying it on Chrome. Uh, clearly, it works on Chrome. Uh, there we go. Nice and fast. Here we go. Print. This is, of course, the script running in the background that's sending stuff to the terminal. Um, mm -hmm. And now we're waiting. Now, here's the fun bit. So if I go to a browser that doesn't support um, uh, some of the features we need, um, the shared array buffer, uh, actually what it'll do, it'll go back to the old version of the site. Now, um, I would really appreciate it. Uh, let me just get back to Firefox. If I go to here and I share this and you very quickly um, take a scan of the QR code with your mobile phones and open the open that web page with whatever your default browser is in your mobile phone or maybe even a selection of browsers uh, Chrome Firefox and Safari are the ones I'm particularly interested in and uh, hopefully if you're on Chrome it should just work if you're on Firefox that depends on which version you're using uh, and if you're on Safari it won't work um, but I'll leave that QR code up just a little bit longer and then I'll stop sharing my screen and go back to Discord now and stop streaming. So we are now back to, um, yeah, you lot. Yeah. Uh, I got, uh, I got a two, a two, a two. For, this is like being an ice skater. Uh, 
I can't hear you, Fabio. You're muted. I was saying, sorry, I was saying I had this ready for you to say you had two minutes left. Ah, um, ah perfect. I thought you were giving me a score, like, you know, the end of the ice But we can see the, the, the video. 5.9, 6.0, whatever. Okay, uh, Andrea. I'm confused why it doesn't work on iPhone. Uh, it doesn't work with Safari. Safari doesn't... Safari. Safari doesn't support shared array buffer. If you use Chrome on an iPhone, it will work. Uh, that's not an option usually. Oh, that's oh no, of course. US, sorry, sorry. Yeah. no, it isn't. So yeah, it won't work on an iPhone. Because... No, but why? Why? I mean, my, the share, my, we, we my... have the shared array buffer problem. No, we don't. I mean, my terminal works on on GitHub. Uh, why we cannot make it work? Okay, on, on you and me. US? Then guess what we're doing tomorrow, mate. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. Man, and I took the PR out of draft just a few minutes ago as well. There was me thinking we, we got it sorted. But um, yeah, let's see what's happening tomorrow. So that's my presentation. Hopefully, by the time you get to PyCon, um, we have a very quick way of getting people to just open it up on their browsers by saying go to PyScript.net and you've got your MicroPython REPL there. So I've used up my two minutes. Thank you very much, Fabio, for that. Uh, I really appreciate it. So uh, are there any questions? <laughs> Nope, there are no questions. So uh, we'll move on to Fabio. Fabio, the floor is yours, matey. Yeah, I don't have a question. I have an appreciation. This is really cool. Uh, so great job. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Uh, actually, uh, just as an aside, it's good for us because we're starting to see how do people embed this stuff into just normal web pages, not PSTC. I'm looking at Jeff because I know you've got blogs where you want to embed stuff i've got a blog post on your networks where i want to embed stuff and so it, this is this is really helpful for us so yeah anyway okay okay i have one question okay um how are you doing the uh detection of uh what, what are you using to detect that that the shared array buffer isn't working to fall back to the image i or try the... uh, uh i <laughs> A very advanced AI here. I typed, how do you detect if a browser supports shared array buffer into Google? It sent me to a Stack Overflow, uh, which essentially uh, I create a shared array buffer of a certain size. And if it is undefined, then I throw an exception uh, or whatever and, uh, and and then catch that and hide the right thing and show the other thing instead. So um, that's yeah. essentially it. That's why I think it's the shared array buffer, Andrea, is that I'm 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 testing on that but we can we can figure that out tomorrow uh i'm clearly testing it wrong though is the problem no 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 it, it's not you testing it wrong there's something wrong with the headers so this is i don't know if you can see it but this is the micropython editor working just fine out of a worker out of my github github pages and it's just using a service worker to do this so i'm sure okay. there's something wrong yeah. with the headers okay. because the, the the stuff is tested and this is my iphone and it just works right and so uh, I, I was surprised because we I, I knew maybe firefox mobile wouldn't be up to the task but maybe we are doing something weird to investigate with the headers maybe it's because um, i'm using mini that... i'm using we're mini not using mini -coy, but mini -coy is just overriding headers so yeah. We should try to understand. Yes, yeah, what's I was going to say that there, there, there's more than yeah. There are a few moving. Stuff. That's tomorrow yeah. morning. Me and you, uh, Martin. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I just I just wanted because people are watching this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I just yeah, yeah. We will figure it out. We it's gonna work. work. It's, it's gonna, gonna work. work on as many mobile phones as we can test. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so is that app served from PyScript apps dot com? Yes. 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 Uh, Andre, I think that's something that we I, I've wanted to clean up for a while now because I, I have a feeling that the first versions of of th those headers got sprinkled everywhere because people were just trying to make the stuff work but i look at pyscriptapps.com and i really i really want to um I, I, I think with your expertise we need to sit down and go what headers do we actually need because i think we're overly restrictive on some of the headers we were conservative at the start and i think there's a lot of stuff we need fixing there right yeah we, yeah, we, we yeah, can investigate this in tomorrow um, yeah. We we'll do that. Yes, I can join in tomorrow. We yeah, can definitely, sort, we can... definitely, yes, definitely, definitely, yes, definitely. Yeah, cool. Okay, my apologies, Fabio. That's more than two minutes, but that's other people. No, no questions. Questions are for for this. Um, <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll. Yeah, I'll try to be super brief. Uh, so, 
Let me share this first. Um, and you should be seeing my screen. So mm -hmm. I finally got time to get back to these forever long uh, uh, PyDOM PR, uh, PyWeb PR. Mm -hmm. That's basically support for elements. Um, uh, mo most of the most used elements uh, and adds them to PyWeb.UI. Uh, it got stuck for a long time because, well, my time and distractions and things like this. Um, but also, we had issues with MicroPython, and I just didn't have time to separate things, etc. So for now, Andrea had uh, disabled that on MicroPython, so it only works on, on Pyodide. The PR actually adjusts that. So this is the demo. Uh, if you see, I'm refreshing it. It's running on MicroPython, blazing fast. It has all the, these are just a very small sub, uh, fraction of the elements that we have support for. Uh, I also had support added support for Markdown. markdown. Um, I think this one and shoe the shoelace ones. Uh, I'll probably merge with the PR, but I'll have a follow up PR to move it, move them somewhere else because I don't think they belong to the, the standard library. Uh, or I just remove from the PR. We can we can decide. Uh, demos Markdown uh, works just like last time. Uh, uh, and then tic tac toe as well. <laughs> Yay! <Whee>. Um, <laughs> and so, and in the meantime, I also fixed a couple of things. Um, and actually, let me share uh, this other thing uh, with the PR. I also added tests because it's always good to have tests. Um, so you should be seeing these. Um, so I've had a test for all the elements uh, running both on the main and on the worker and running on uh, async or not async. Uh, and the tests themselves are basically, um, they're not really thorough. They just create each element with a bunch of properties uh, for each one of them. Actually, if I just show. Um, it just creates all the, all the elements uh, with a bunch of properties, known properties, and verify that they are they've been added to the page. Um, so this is the code. Uh, it very it runs, uh, adds the element to the page, verifies that the element has been created, and it has all the properties that are correct. Um, last thing, but at least in the meantime, I also fixed another thing when the when decorator uh, because of. Um, MicroPython not supporting uh, inspect signature. Um, and honestly, I tried to see if I can just use the the main Python code that is open source and get only the parts that we need from there. But uh, it was a rabbit hole. I spent uh, two hours trying to mock or replace things in the standard library uh, in the inspect module. And it's just too much, to be honest. So I think for now, we're going to be good with a hack for MicroPython and see what we can do later. Um, the problem here really is uh, supporting um, supporting functions that don't have the right signature. Uh, so on Pyodide, we are able to say, well, if you define a function without attributes, we're not going to pass you the, the event. Uh, and if you have the event, we're going to pass you uh, and all the other attributes that you, you may want. With MicroPython, inspect signature doesn't work, so we don't have that visibility. Um, I got to the point where I replaced everything, and then I got stuck because it also needs the AST module, and I'm not going to rewrite also the AST module. <laughs> so for now, it's that. Uh, that's it. I'll, I'll try to put the PR in better shape basically removing the, the shoelace part and mark, markdown part, and then I'll open for review, finally. Bravo. That's it. Bravo. Thank you. Um, I have a question, or at least a comment. Um, MicroPython, at some point, as part of its interpreting of the Python code, is going to have to create an AST. So <laughs> there is one in MicroPython, if you see what I mean. Uh, it's whether we can get hold of it and whether Damien, uh, I imagine, 
people who run MicroPython on microcontrollers really don't care about the abstract syntax tree. But now that MicroPython is yes. making waves in the WebAssembly world, and lots of people are like, man, that's fast. I want that. Um, Damien's going to, uh, well, he knows this, I know anyway, but, um, you know, he's going to get an all, so all sorts of interesting requests. And I, I love the cup, by the way. And, um, uh, and you know, he, 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 right. he, he's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a cup very far away yet so close. Um, it's a trick of perspective. Uh, so he's, he said to me when I spoke to him last, this is the balancing act and you know how how do we sort of uh, ford that river as it were but he's very clever at that sort of thing which is why micropython so successful so um yeah no, and it's totally understandable like actually i tried to look at micropython first and micropython has a uh, an inspect module and yeah. you can see there plus comments in the many forums and stuff like it, it's a recurring theme of if you're using MicroPython, you should know those things already. And they're, the trade-offs the, um, the trade -offs we do to make it fast include those things, yeah. right? So it's totally understandable. Yeah. Now, it, I don't think it's a super easy problem. So uh, good luck to to, George, uh, to Damien. Yeah. Um, and yeah, <laughs> but, but anyway. Yeah, but he, he's got, you know, like a degree in, you know, PhD in physics in 11 dimensional theoretical physics or something like that. So if anyone can think this, out, I think I think Damien can. Um, are yep. there any more questions for Fabio on on what we've just seen? Uh, Andrea? Mm, maybe not really a question. It's just how much do we want MicroPython on the web to be different from the MicroPython that everyone knows? Because um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we are enabling a lot of stuff, and it makes sense because it's like a tar a different target platform. So to me, it makes everything makes sense. But in, in the JavaScript world, uh, the JS Quick and uh, also Spruino, the, the, they have similar trade-offs. So like the function to string, which is extremely useful to forward functions that are uh, pure functions into the worker world, let's say, um, doesn't exist. And introspection doesn't exist. And a, a lot of things don't exist because in the target, the original, pre the, 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 pre the previous or original target device makes no sense and nobody wants that. Uh, at the same time, I think when it comes to the web, it makes sense to push forward for stuff that, uh, okay we need and that makes sense for the web and so that's differentiating it's branching i, I just see micropython because if you if you check the repository it's like tons of branches about every single platform and uh, board and everything else and then there is WebAssembly, which is this blob and or web is already branching between the web assembly micropython and the web assembly PyScript. so I, all i want to say is that it will it would be super nice to have a way to to interact with people taking care of the MicroPython WebAssembly branch because it's not just Damien and, um, and 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 to be sure that we're not pushing too much or pushing too low because you know there, there are maybe a lot of things that they can enable just like this while compiling and transpiling but at the same time the reason everyone wants MicroPython is because it's fast and if we ask too much maybe it's going to be not that fast anymore <laughs> so uh, that, that's it from uh, for, for me it probably was more a rant than a question but uh, um, yeah. I, I, I think it's worth thinking about MicroPython on the web because it's still MicroPython, right? Yeah. It wants to preserve its identity. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And now I'm looking at, uh, I think uh, Fabio has his hand up to, I think, respond to that. But Fabio, and then I think, Jeff, you were just a smidge after Fabio. Super, super fast because we don't want to disappoint Sam. Uh, so I actually left a comment. I, I agree with you. There's a balance between what we should what we should bring to MicroPython, I say we, but the community in general should bring to MicroPython and what we should cover in the docs, right? A big thing, actually a comment in the code is, I'm monkey patching this ugly thing here. It is really bad. I don't, right now I can't think of a better way. We should probably just fail and put a, a smart message saying, hey, you are MicroPython, you decorated a function. Most likely your function doesn't have arguments uh, and you need to do this, this, this. Right or 
if we import daytime and we know it's in MicroPython, we say, oh, MicroPython doesn't support daytime. Use this instead, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't support all of those modules. Uh, exactly. Uh, the, so, the, the, I just, just a comment to, to say I think I agree with you. It's some work that we need to do. But I want you to, I think Jeff has his hand, and I want you to go do your demo. <laughs> Jeff. Um, yeah, the only, I, I, I agree, but there's a tricky balance to be found there. In my impression in speaking with people when I like give talks on PyScript or at PyCon last year, is for a lot of the people who are coming to MicroPython PyScript, PyScript is their first introduction to MicroPython. I think there's a, a relatively small group of people, and I've talked to a couple of them who know MicroPython and are excited to run it on the web, but for a lot of people, it's they know CPython, and they're like, oh, this is a faster thing, but how is it different? So I think we have an opportunity there for a lot of our audience to say, this is MicroPython as it exists in PyScript, and to do things like you say, Fabio, of like, make smart changes and show smart error messages, and I don't know that we'll confuse the core MicroPython users that much there's a the maintenance question and the branching question i think is separate and is really a, a problem as you say andrea like we could really get into a mess but from a communication standpoint i think we have an opportunity we throw it to nicholas and then i actually got to run andrea i'll watch your video on, on when this is on youtube i'm so sorry <laughs> oh jeff I, I just wanted to, to talk about the branches and things micropython yeah. almost has that solved already in that micropython has the notion of a an architecture to which it is compiled and because there are like a plethora of boards that all target ARM chips, okay, within an architecture are ports. So um, an architecture, uh, sorry, a, a board. So a port is the target architecture. The board is the thing within that architecture. So the way it works at the moment is, uh, or the way I can see it working is that WebAssembly is a port. So it's it's targeting a particular architecture and within that we will have a PyScript board and there will be a Node.js board uh, or whatever uh, uh, there will be a some other person hacking on MicroPython in WebAssembly board as well uh, but the, the, the point is, is that Damien's been here before because there's so many different combinations of these kind of cool funky little devices so um, I, I it's a worry, but Damien's been there, got the T-shirt, and you know he's he's come he's he's come up with processes for for for, for working with that. Time out. I agree with you, Fabio. Uh, I, I should shut up. Um. So Andrea, uh, you look like the sort of person who's being interviewed on the news. Um. You know, blacked out. You know, we've talking to a source <laughs> who wishes to remain anonymous. That's because you're sat in front of a window, mate, and all we can see is your outline silhouette. So anyway, go for it. <laughs> Yeah, it's the purpose <laughs> to have the window <laughs> behind. Um, Evan State. Uh, yeah, fun, fun, fun Friday. Uh, no, sorry. It's fun Tuesday, Thursday. <laughs> what fun is it? Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've seen the device before. Uh, just want to show you the can connect, and this is uh, and it's showing already which device I'm on it. Um, and just like copy and paste this stuff on the device and upper center, and you see it's streaming uh, and all that kind of stuff, which is cool. Then I can do more specific device specific things, um, still copy and paste. Um, and, and, Hey, no, look at that. Well, you see it? Okay. Yeah, do it again. Do it again, <laughs> please. Do it again. While it, while it was going, I, I was pressing enter so many times. Hello, world. <laughs> yeah, we can see that. That's awesome. And, uh, and you see the the, the, the the REPL is a serial port-based REPL that is using basically, I would say, 70% of what we use in PyScript 2. But there is one missing bit, which is the 30% missing, which is read line. So when I compare this repo, which is basically based on PyScript, so you can do all, everything you have seen so far, you can do with this PyScript 
as well. You can bootstrap a REPL that connects to um, a device by MicroPython. So you have MicroPython on the browser that communicates to MicroPython on the on the device, and that's super cool. But this is, and uh, bear with me, this is probably not the most updated version I have because we had uh, a release and I forgot to update this branch. Um, so maybe not everything is that, that I'm showing to you is true, but basically I can't, I cannot do this, for instance, and that's annoying. So I can I cannot have a proper repo um, in uh, in in current PyScript repo. I mean, it's almost a proper repo, but what I hear is is like whatever I type, um, that test uh, return one two three, um, and that was invalid syntax because returning was written. Badly. So let's try again. Return one, two, three, and so so so. I'm, I it's just feeling. Oh gosh, it's just feeling. It's just feeling nice. Yeah, but you see also the trace back. So it's like you. I am in a repo, and um, everything is super smooth and quick. Um, we we are almost there. So if I do dev test and uh, uh, well come on, dev test and uh, return one two three. So you can see that almost everything looks the same, but behind the scene is actually not. The reason is the read line we are using to not block user inputs on the main. Um, I think is not playing too nicely as the as the. As the um, serial port version, and so if I if I do copy and paste these, it doesn't work. If I write these like import time uh, um, for e in, for i in range um, zero five uh, print i time sleep sleep one. And if I keep going, we should see the same result, you know? And so this is cool. And also the autofit. <laughs> I'm out of autofit. <laughs> but anyway, um, all I wanted to say is that working on this thing, which also allows me to soft reset, soft, soft boot the device again and do something else after. Um, once it's connected, it works. And also, we don't have a soft reset into the terminal. So I've learned a lot of things that a, a, a proper REPL can, can offer uh, w w when it comes to um, expectations. And, and I want to bring the latest discoveries into PyScript Terminal 2, because I think everything I've seen last two days or last day and a half um, is super cool. And I, and I really want us to be there um, with the look and feel and everything else should just work out of the box. So you copy and paste, you enter, you control C, control E, control D, control V, control E, whatever <laughs> control you want to uh, uh, throw at it. Um, and that's it. That's my demo, basically. It's just, I, I've been, been working on a terminal, um, which, is based, which, which is based or can be based on PyScript 2. Um, out of either MicroPython or PyLab. Um, and my recent learning and discoveries have been mind-blowing to me. Great stuff, Andre. Bravo. Um, any comments, questions? Just back in your really great stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And it would be great if we can actually have the REPL working without having to put it in a worker, because then, <laughs> you know, the shared array buffer, SAB, uh, kind of doesn't make us sad anymore. There we yeah, go. I'm a poet. The, yeah, yeah. But it's, I mean, for the, for the micro Python use case, the, the shared array buffer or the worker mandatory or, uh, let's say, we, we prefer workers in general because they don't block the UI. Yeah. So that still makes sense. Yeah. But... On the other hand, the MicroPython bootstrap is, you can't, you can't feel it. It's yeah. just super, super fast. <laughs> so it's, I mean, when, when everyone else is maybe doing a lot of bloated frameworks on the web by default in JavaScript, do we need, really need to um, 
make MicroPython not capable of doing a terminal on, on, on the mainframe, on the main main thread, sorry. And uh, yeah, my, my answer is probably no. <laughs> and uh, and also this 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 is one of the other discoveries is that not not only we don't need a shared data buffer for MicroPython on the main thread for a terminal, but we also need less dependencies probably on the on the external side side of affair. Um, and by the way, uh, hat tip to Exter project. It's it's amazing, and, uh, and and it does. So when you think, wow, this library is not working, is always you doing something wrong. <laughs> so that, that's my learning also. Uh, me me doing something wrong, and so it's 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 amazing because it really really can. So in this in this example, it can really reproduce a proper repo. You don't even feel it. It's, it's just why? Wow, <laughs> is it communicated at 115 kilobytes <laughs> bit per second? I don't know. It just feels right and good. Yeah. So um, yeah, cool. hat tips to oh, Andrea. To, to, I think you deserve this. The other open source projects. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> really nice. It's, it's, oh, it's mine team. though. With the Anto Bunny. Uh, the bunny. Okay. The, the Antonio's oh. version of the bunny. Yeah. Well, well anyway. Yeah. T shirts aside. Uh and Andre, as always, that was awesome. Damn, damn. I've I've got a couple of minutes before I have to kind of jump and take, you know, trombone lesson, dad taxiing duty kicks in for me. Um uh, uh just so that and and uh, any more for any more on this call. Any more comments, questions, things like that? If not, uh, thank you for watching, folks. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, if I can find the tab, stop recording.